Hi guys, how you doing? I'm here today at Foreground with Big Ben. How you doing? Oh, I'm very well. <laughs> Very well. This is we've done this quite a few times now. It's uh, tool. It's this is and it is it is. It's this yeah. massive new microphone that I'm using <laughs> for interviews, uh, and I keep shoving it in people's Thank faces. You. Okay, so Ben, we're here today. You're going to tell us a little bit about the company, uh, and then yeah. we're going to have a look around and look at all the exciting sure, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how did it all start out? Uh, we were time again. We make historic toys for heritage sites in the UK, and we also use lasers. We use lasers originally for cutting out shields. Uh, game boards, that sort of thing. Any any shade of carbonized wood that you'd you'd sort of want. I mean, you know, that's that's the uh, the, the three lions. Yeah. Uh, and that is the uh, obviously the, the Scottish Shield. That that's what we do. As well as that, we we had two lasers at the time, and we also did, had already started doing some contract laser work. Uh, it was at a thing called uh, Festival of History for English Heritage, and we were there as one of their suppliers. And uh, John from All Lord Games came up to us, and he we, we talked about the lasers, and he said, "Could you guys do a Rock's Drift kit? You know, uh, for, for Rock's Drift is a uh, during the Zulu War there was a particular engagement where a farmstead was turned into a hospital for injured troops, and this this hospital and the patients in the hospital had to withstand." Um, an assault and it was on an occasion where I think more VCs which is the Victoria Cross yeah. the, the British uh, 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 highest medal for bravery were given out for that action it was a, it was an important thing for uh, Warlord to make the kits that they thought was going to be a great gaming environment so you'd have the British on one side the Zulu on the other side the, the British forces much less than the Zulus and they were in and around Rourke's Drift. We had so much fun making that kit that actually uh, Time Again started making it. And by the end of it, we had actually set up the foreground design studio and uh, it, was a, it was a foreground kit. And then since then, foreground has done less and less and less uh, uh, contract work for, for, for companies outside of Wargaming. And now all the time we, we, we design sort of Wargame kits that we want to do. And, and for people that don't know the history, go see Zulu. <laughs> yeah, go see Zulu. Don't throw those spears at me. He never said that. He, he never said that in the movie at all. No, no. Uh, but it stars Michael Caine, yeah, uh, yeah. and that's always good. Okay, so have you got anything else you can show us? Um, what, 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 toy swords? Yeah, toy swords, yeah. Uh, well, that's that's the, probably the biggest one we do. That's an oak blade, and... Um, and that's it. That's that's big boy size. Even is, probably your I can, your size. That's a full size. I can just hold. about fit that in my hand. That's a <laughs> massive <laughs> weapon to hold. It's fantastic. And, and, and then the rest of it is bows and arrows, yeah. swords, shields, that sort of thing. But I mean, um, it, this is important to us. But I spend my time now. My working in day is actually as one of the designers at, at Foreground. Yeah. Uh, we have four four designers: Adam and myself, who were the original designers, and then Kevin and Andy have also come on board. Uh, we. We have our own particular way of designing. There's certain things that we do that, that, that we've evolved to do that's quite different from everybody else, gives a different effect on our kits. And, um, and so, you know, des training designers in-house has, has been the best way for us to go forwards. And we're very, very pleased. The four of us do some kits that we're happy with. We sort of like, when we design a kit, we sort of like put it in front of our peers and everyone there, uh, including CAD, of course, is a managing director. Yeah. And they then give their opinion and go, oh, I don't like that. I do like that. Can you do that? And uh, you get a little bit precious if you're the guy who did most of that yeah. project. And they yeah, go, and I, I can imagine like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your tool's still scaring yeah. me, but there you go. I'll get used to it. Okay. Listen, let's go and have a look around and yeah. see some of the most amazing things that you've got laying around. Yeah, and uh, I'll see you guys in a second. Okay. Here we are. We're downstairs in the in the laser room. This is the freaking laser the room. freaking laser room. Uh, yeah, and you pick, pick the best day. Uh, I've we've got to got say, I picked the noisiest day. No, it's a normal day, but we've got, uh, we, 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 uh, all our lasers are made in Austria by a company called Trotec. They're fantastic lasers. They got a UK based service team that are absolutely brilliant. Uh, we're now test driving uh, a brand new laser called the Speedy 360. And uh, they chose us to be the company that tests it. Wow. Because of the horrendous environment, we keep lasers in. <laughs> is this is this because is this like what they do with Land Rover when they take it and they like wear it out well, as much the as possible? The thing is, our lasers, lasers at foreground, have more uh, on time than any other lasers in the world for the company for the, for this for this size. Obviously, you get massive lasers and that sort of thing. We turn our lasers on uh, uh, seven lasers now, eight as of today. We turn them on at nine fifteen on Sunday morning, and we turn them off at three o'clock on Friday. So they're on that all that time. We were a night. Shifts. We've got two guys who run nights and we've got guys working right the way through. Um, it's a way of us being able to keep the affordability there as well because uh, 
all our buildings are on very expensive, very long-term leases. And so if you're working 24-6-ish, uh, it, it all goes towards the cost. L lasers cost an absolute fortune. So if you can keep them on, then that's, that's a really good thing. The thing is, is that these are the only ones we could find literally in the world that were robust enough to do this. All the bits switch out to these machines. But when you go around today, you'll see there's a guy here, Ash, who's actually a, a, a service engineer from Trotec, and you'll see that uh, they come here quite a lot to make sure these babies so, just keep so working. So let me get this right. So, so they come to you and said, here's our brand new laser. We want you to break it. See if you can break it. Yeah, we, 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 we have a very good working relationship with them. and. Um, we're very proud of the fact that they asked us to do it. I mean, I think our guys are taking it too literally, and they want to like keep pumping the keep pumping the kits out, you know. Um, and there you go. This laser has just stopped, so I can't really show you yeah. it working. Uh, and the one just here. Well, actually, if I let you see what's going on here, I mean, this is this is how we we ducked it out because everything here has evolved. This used to be, as I remember I was saying, this used to be part of time again. So uh, the mezzanine floor had to come in when we had the lasers because of warehousing. We, 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 we started with two lasers. We've now ex expanded the lasers and they have to fit in. We're not like, you know, sometimes people think this is a big corporate organization, but in actual fact, at, at the core of it, it's myself, uh, my, my partner, who's, who's one of my sons, Adam, and the guy who actually runs the place, who is actually Adam's older brother, and that's Cad. So this is very much a family business? Uh, yeah, because other people couldn't work with me. I mean, <laughs> I just need to talk too much. I, I'll get grumpy. Well, I've I got to say, I do enjoy our two-hour phone calls. Uh, <laughs> you always phone me up when you say I've got something to drive, which I don't know what it's a compliment. No, that is, it is, it is, it is, because I enjoy talking to you. So... Should we have a quick look at some of the other machines and you can maybe walk us through it? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually going to take you over to the, the Speedy 360 because this is, a, this is the, new, the, the, the new super deluxe laser that's, uh, that we're, we're, we're trying out. And um, it looks very different from our other lasers. But like, our, like I, I was saying before, our other lasers are fantastic workhorses. They really do the job. And I'm not really that worried about the looks of this machine if it's as... If it's as if it can do as well as the ones we've got, then that's fine. But this is, if you want to have a picture of a nice, shiny new laser, then this would be the ideal one to watch. Try and get a shot, Try and get a shot of this, Kev. Just have a look at this. I mean, at the, what we do when we actually, you know, our, our, our sprues, we call them pre-painted with foreground base paint. Well, when we first started uh, uh, making the Rorks Drift, we thought that one of the big problems you have with MDF is you, if you, and, and HDF is if you don't know how to seal it, it can be problematic. So we actually went to uh, a, a paints manufacturer and we said, we want an emulsified oil that, that w where the vapors won't actually destroy the lenses because the plasmarized oils in all the, in all the paints, they actually damage the, the, damage the workings of the machine. We got the right kind of paint. We've really upped the extraction. And what we do first of all is we then get all the components. In this case, I think there's something that's gonna be done that's like red brick. So this has been painted with the red brick color. We have 28 different colors, foreground base, base paint colors that go on before we laser cut it. Everything that's gonna be on these sprues will be the red brick ones. And what people do is they take the white ones and the brown ones and the gray ones, and they make from these two dimensional bits, they make their three dimensional kit. And because foreground's base paints are, are a colored primer sealer, you can then do almost anything else after that. We've done that initial work, and we've also got it hopefully to, to the, the color that you want to start working on. I've got to say, I'm actually amazed that it's actually sketching out all the bricks right now. It, it will sketch, it will do all this, and that's the other thing that's really different about, about lasers and about resin casting. I could, I could sculpt something in resin and it wouldn't be very good. And you've got some great guys out there who can sculpt the most amazing stuff for resin and the master's going to be fantastic. The time it takes to make that actual uh, resin model is the same. And it, it, the quality is all about the guy who originally did it. With lasers, it's a little bit different because every single laser is individually cut out. Every single kit is individually cut out. Um, we have a, a, the uh, Saga Hall and there's 250 miles of laser time on that kit. And that's what puts the cost up. I mean, the other thing is, is that we don't just, uh, we, we, we do as many different depths of cut as we need to, to make the kit that we're happy with. So when you just cut it out and then put a little bit of scoring on it, if, you know, you were talking about um, on, on the phone the other day about the, the brickwork, the stonework that we're doing on the Arab buildings. Uh, uh, and, and that again, it, that's about making the kits that we want to. And then we look at it and we say, oh, well, it's gotta be that price. But if we were to change it and bring it to, to a lower price point, we wouldn't want that product. And it's, but it's always getting the balance. Sometimes you can't make something because it would just make it too expensive. So 
out of all the kits that you've done so far, and there's, there's been quite a lot of kits, which is your most favourite kit that makes you go, that's my most favourite kit? I think for us, we are, we're really happy with the, um, again, probably with those, those Arab walls that we did, just because, in our opinion, for do two bits of three mil MDF, the way they work, they look. It looks pretty much like a, like a, a mud brick building. Um, the other thing that we're really pleased with is the the, the, the 28 mil church that we just released. I mean, and that's we, that's on pre-order now. That's actually now no longer on pre-order. That's oh, now wow. out, that should be out with their di with their dealers. I mean, we, we, we sell our products to distributors throughout the world. We they should be available from retailers, resellers throughout the world. Um, if they're not, they can get in touch with us, and we'll put them in touch with their local uh, their local retailer. We also try and do a lot of club support because another conversation you and I have had in the past is the fact that personally we're on to our third gaming club, and it's actually just mates together. And so many gaming clubs um, uh, uh, can't can't support themselves, and so being able to give gaming clubs support is really important because this hobby is about guys you know gaming and, so and, and foremost and foremost you, you're a gamer at heart aren't you yeah we're, 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 we're you're laughing now because of the I told you that uh, we gave ourselves a little sort of like fantasy sci-fi embargo of two years and um, uh, so fantasy came out last year and that was uh, at Mordenberg and now we've got the uh, the ruins of Daldor and we've had great fun with those and yeah we do tend to play with them a bit make sure we play test them and yeah uh, you know we've got some other sci-fi stuff um in 28 mil well 32 mil 28 mil depending on what you think the scale is uh that we're really happy with although we're getting a little bit precious about it you know when you make an historical building you know it's like yeah. when you make an historical building like we were talking about rock's drift earlier well if it looks like rock's drift used to look like yeah. then it's pretty much going to be all right but now we're sort of like saying, well, what if people don't like our sci-fi buildings? But we have to just, you know, they've got to be our, our, our corridors, our buildings, our outposts. Hopefully people will like it. We try to be responsive. I and, and no, no, that's fine. Uh, but the thing is with um, anything historical, it's got to be, it's got to be perfect because people will pick yeah. you up on it. Yeah, yeah. But when it's your own stuff, your own fantasy designs and your own sci-fi designs. Then you've got a free hand. You've exactly. Got, you've got a free hand. But then the other trouble is, is that, is that especially, I mean, talk, talking about Adam for instance I mean he's really into Horus Heresy at the moment Adam Cad and Andy the other one of the other designers they're all into Horus Heresy and so you know it's like oh I want to do I want to do some sci-fi buildings for those for those games that I'm playing and that's fine I mean they've got some sci-fi buildings themselves that they felt that they they don't want to release to everyone else yet because um, when you're doing something historical, if it looks like the historical thing is right, when you're doing something from your own from your own imagination, then then sometimes you should just get on with it and do it. But we're all a little bit uh, artistic sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> artistic is the <laughs> word. Autistic, yeah, artistic. no, artistic is the word. Right. But there's nothing wrong with being a little bit precious about stuff as well. We I mean, yeah, we exactly. I mean, I mean, sci-fi particularly. I mean, historical gaming. I've always been very much into historical gaming myself, more from a film sim perspective. Uh, uh, you know. Like, um, if I was going to play Vietnam, I'd rather play something that was a bit, a bit like Platoon rather than something that's a bit full on. Yeah. And it's the same with other historical periods. Like, Bolt Action's a brilliant game to play in the Second World War. I mean, mm. Second World War wasn't a very nice thing, but I love playing Bolt Action. No, and no, for me, the Bolt Action, Bolt Action is the best war it's movie the I've ever played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the balance, right. And, and, after, and, you know, and afterwards, when you're playing it, you think to yourself, um, yeah, that was a cool movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... From this process here, where does it go next? Right, so so you've got all the you've got all the all the different sprues with all the different pre-painted uh, MDF or HDF, and they all get made. We have what we call a crib sheet. So this is the crib sheet, and this that beep just shows that that one's that has stopped. So now what would happen is we'd now unload that, put it to one side. So where we put the sprues there, we always make 20 at a time. You're always going to have mistakes in production. So we, so, so even if we had 200 of something on, on, on order, we would do 20. It would then go through for packing and it would have its own batch number and 20 and 20 and so on. So, times. so in a week here, yeah. from the day that it starts to the day that lasers shut off, yeah. how, ma how many pieces, how many buildings or products it, it, it shipped much, out? It very much depends on the kit. Some of our kits have loads and loads of sprues. Some of our kits have one sprue. I can tell you how many kits from from simple kits to the really big uh, uh, um, uh, 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 
30, 40 sprue kits. We, we made 100,000 kits, 110,000 kits last year. 110,000? In, in 2014, we made 110,000 kits. Jeez. Some of them were just carts and wagons, just a single sprue, and some of them were a lot more sprues. So well, yeah, but I mean, some, I mean, there's a lot. They're quite intense, most of the kits anyway. Even the carts have got loads and loads yeah, of bits well, to them. Well, the thing is, is that you, is that you can make... You can make things that are just block line of sight. I mean, when you and I first started, we used to make stuff out of cornflakes packets. We used to stick, you know, we used to get a green blanket. We used to stick books under the green blanket and our figures used to fall out. I mean, Tin cans. Exactly that. And, and you know, when we were going to make these kits, and, and that was really nice about the original brief from Warlord, was uh, they wanted the kits to be, to be a really cool kit. And then, uh, we didn't know how far we could take that. And then uh, uh, Great Escape Games, they, they liked what we were doing and they were bringing out, bringing out a game called Dead Man's Hand, which is a, a cowboy skirmish game. And they then said something really quite bizarre to us, which is, we don't mind how much uh, the, 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 the cost is going to be because of all the detail in it. We want cowboy buildings with the doors that open. We want staircases in every room. We want the roof hatches to open and close. And we did all that. And yeah, it, it pushed the price point, but people love that. And so with, with, uh, with some of our uh, uh, kits from a couple of years ago, um, we, we were more worried about what people wanted. And now we think that for a lot of people that collect our stuff, yeah. they like the sort of, uh, I've had it described as a, as bloody Playmobil. <laughs> all the Playmobil. Well, like for instance, on the dead man's hand, uh, Sheriff, you can actually bust out the, the jail wind, uh, uh, the, the, you know, where, you know, everyone's got a hand. Every, every cowboy movie where they, they pull out the, 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 the bars. Rope, yeah. The rope to the bars and pull it. We can do that with ours. And that was, that was something that they specifically wanted. And I think it's worked really well. And it showed us that, that game as actually they, they want kits that they can have a lot of pleasure making they're not the easiest of kits and our instructions are, are people sometimes think we deliberately make rubbish instructions we're doing that to the best of our ability it's just you make it one day and you think, oh those kits they really they, that really works every every set of kits is actually uh, photographed and set out by the designer who designed the kit you go back to it two months later and you think what kind of a monkey wrote this stuff but I've got to say, but that's that's one of the things. I mean, and it's, I mean, it's something that you have, you're addressing anyway. Well, we and, it, and it, yeah, and it's something that you're uh, that we've spoke we, we've we've spoken about. And I, I know the phone saying, "What the heck?" Did well, you my list? well, it's, it's not that. I mean, the thing about it was is that they're beautiful kits, and that's Thank the first thing. Much. And the hard part for me was was putting it down. I think that's that's very. We know we have got some people that that, that want to know what's on the release schedule coming up. We, we tend to design kits quite quickly, and we tend to if 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 we're in the mood for that kit, it comes out a lot quicker. Uh, yeah, we do have quite a few fans of our kits. Um, you know, some people have said, could they have our kits unpainted? Because the paint, our paint, is so phenomenally expensive that that, and I know you've talked to me before. Well, if it's so expensive. What could you sell the kit for if it wasn't pre-painted? And I said it'd be about 25% less. And one of the things you said is, well, can't we have a drop down? And I'm going to look into that, see if we can have a drop down. Yeah, I think that's quite important. I quite like the idea of a drop down because it allows for people that just want to paint their buildings yeah. uh, and paint them to their standards and for them. Yeah, and they, scratch, know, definitely. And they, know, they know the way they prefer to prime it. They know what the color scheme that they want. And um, there, there are... St they're good to go as they are. You put them together, they're good to go as they are. They take a little bit more effort than some kits to put together. You certainly feel like you've 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 made that project. Yeah. You can then do. It's designed to be to, for weathering. It's designed for inking. It's designed to do all those different things that, that people might want to do with it. But I take on board what you said that that well, if if the paint's so expensive, can't we have the drop down? And and you know, wouldn't it be weird if we get that sorted in the next? I can't say that would be really amazing. Now, the nice thing about it is, is that all the buildings are base coated, because uh, a lot of people tend to think that yeah. that's the finished product. Yeah, all our buildings. Um, if you if you're buying it from your local hobby store, if you're buying it from uh, from from um, any of the other uh, 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 sites that we that, uh, from the distributors, whatever. All foreground kits, apart from some of the carts and wagons, because they should be wood colour, and we thought, well, let's not, let's not actually. Let's paint keep them the way they are. Keep them the way they are. Uh, they've they've all been painted with foreground base paints, which is a primer sealer, and it's a colour. So, like I was saying earlier, there's 28 colours. So, brick has a sort of a red bricky colour, which is great because it means you can build up your layers of colouring, of shading, or you can just. You, you can just have it as it is. A lot of people like our kits just as they are. Um, it's like with our thatch, you know, you're always laughing because I proved Well, yeah, no, because I've got to say, I, I didn't realise, I didn't realise it's actually, it really it's is, fur. It really, sorry, sorry, Ash, he's, he's a man doing his work here. Trying <laughs> to make this, I mean, he's, it, right, mate. Um, so this is a new, this laser, it's our laser five. This is going back into production now because the, the new uh, um, uh, 360 has just come in. But this kind of working environment, 
this is quite normal for us. We seem to be all running around like gerbils trying to make it work. So, uh, but how many lasers are you running at the moment? Uh, we're run, we're as of uh, as of. Uh, this morning we were running seven and we're just about to be up and running uh, fully ducted and everything uh, uh, health and safety uh, legal for want of a better phrase. Uh, this afternoon there'll be eight and they'll still be running from uh, from Sunday morning through to Friday afternoon. That's actually amazing that they go through all of that. It, it is amazing. I mean, it's amazing how much, I mean, you know, if you look around, the, the, all these different MDFs, they're all different colours, the different 28 colours. We, we try and keep in 500 sheets of every colour so we can just pick it off. You, you pick it off, uh, it's a bit like painting by numbers when you make our kits. Mm. Uh, um, so we have, to have, we have to have all those different colours because although we have these, uh, these crib sheets that, that this is what tells them what's going to actually be in it and this is our little uh, post-it notes on what laser we did it in, how many pieces are needed and that sort of thing. Sometimes they're double-sided, sometimes they're not. But you know when we were talking about the process and how the process works. So when I've got 20 of those, I'll sign it off or, or rather this is Andrew here. Who's, Andrew, who's, uh, because he spends the, the two companies, Time Again and Foreground, are very closely associated. You might notice that he's got his Time Again top on. We are, the reason, we, it's not because we're saddos. The reason, the, we actually get very dirty at work. And I was so, going to say, it could, it could get quite cold as well. At least he's keeping warm. Yeah, but well, we get very <laughs> dirty at work. Uh, there's about, it, there's things in the UK about right, appropriate clothing for work. So everyone is supplied with the appropriate COVID clothing. Uh, it's not because he's snuck in from another company. Uh, but... Andrew, as well as being one of the guys who makes the toy swords, he can also run lasers and everything else like that. So anyway, well, that's really good. So people, people basically multitask between different jobs. People multitask. The most important people you're ever gonna, you know, you know no matter what kit you have, um, it's it's like with the with the with the lasers. A laser is no good if you don't have somebody who, who knows how to do the program, but you don't have a good tech guy who can make it work. It's like 3D printing. My, you wouldn't buy what I could print in 3D printing. No, no. You know, it no not at all. The tool does not make the tool. The tool does not make the finished product. It, yeah. it, your interviewing skills is what's making this. Okay, your, uh, so look, let me just say, let me just ask this. Then. So once all it's all been cut out, so it's all it's all been done, and it gets stacked over here. Yeah. So now we have a kit. You might have to you might have to follow us round here. Okay, so now we're going to duck underneath here, everyone. Yeah. So this is a kit. All this is is this this, this is hold on, hold on. This is this is interview <laughs> on a shelf the, through the window. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What happens here then? So so this kit here, uh, this is this is in fact actually uh, this is actually all the different parts for this kit will be on this tray. Can I just say this is quite bizarre? Uh, <laughs> usual for me when trying to figure out what's gone wrong, but bizarre for you. Yeah. Um, okay. Go on. Once go on. all the bits are on here, then it's then taken through, and I can take, show you where yeah. we're all our packing. Is okay. Ready. So we're going to go off to the packing room. We're going to see you in there in a second. So I've got to say, this room's a lot cooler than the last room we've just been in. Uh, yeah. Eight lasers do make it a bit hot. Don't eight they? freaking lasers. <laughs> okay. So what happens in here then? Okay. So you know, we said that we have a crib sheet. A crib sheet will tell people what programs to load onto the laser what depths it is and what, what, what materials to use. Uh, this is a pile of crib sheets over here. So all of that in through there, these are all different crib sheets. And this is a crib sheet that's just come back through. Uh, same as what I was showing you earlier. So you've got the, the, the notes to say what you did. I mean, this kit has, has quite a few little bits in it. And that's the kit that's under there. So all the bits that are in there, all the different colors, uh, some of it is uh, th uh, three mil MDF, two mil HDF and one mil uh, laser board. And it's a mixture of that. We also do use some, some gray card for things like uh, roof tiles and that sort of thing. And we double paint that. Because you do, you do also do roof tiles separately, don't you? We do roof tiles as an add-on kit. I mean, the thing is, is that it, for me personally, I like to tile the roofs <laughs> of the houses I've got in my own collection. Yeah. Well, we, we've actually talked about this earlier because yeah. you're, you're, you're giving me some tiles to take away. I and said, I said, no. <laughs> I said, did you want to try the tiles? Because you said to me, no, I'm going to paint them up. And I said to you that... I just personally like the buildings with the roof mm. tiles, but that would add to the retail price so much, yeah. it's an option. Yeah. Um, but that's but the thing, people can buy it, yeah, people yeah, can buy, buy the building now, and then later on you can go, yeah, actually, I'll add those to it. It's the same as is with, the, with, the, with the weathering and with the inking or anything else like that. Mm. Get the kit, make the kit, you've got those, those colours, it's good to go on the table, and then if you want to do more with it later, do more with it later. It, 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 can, it, it becomes your kit. Okay, let me ask you a question then. Which is the most popular kit you do? Uh, the most popular kit since last December has been uh, uh, probably the Stoic Arms, which is the, 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 the fantasy kit. Before that, it's all the rubble that's used in Second World War, War games, you know, all the damaged buildings and the ruined buildings. Um, but there's, we wanted to make something for, for the fantasy range, for, for, for Mordenberg, that, that was sort of like a bit of a focal point. I mean, 
we brought out the stoic arms and it was a it was a, a fantasy sci-fi ta- a fantasy tavern um and, and if you and if you went to salute like this year you would have seen it all laid they out would have seen it at salute this year they would also seen the, the the city watchtower in that range so we're having a lot of fun with our fantasy stuff um we've had a bit of fun with some of our our, our sci-fi ideas. but do, do you think that by doing all the historical stuff that's given you the sort of um the skill set. skill set to actually yeah. going to create your own stuff yeah because four years ago we 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 thought we'd had a, to get over a lot of issues with different things that customer want customers wanted but then when we were actually in a different situation because now you're making this model kit that has to, people have to be able to put together you've got a limited amount of components and it's how far can you take these two-dimensional bits and hopefully end up with quite a, well, in our opinion, a, a cool three-dimensional thing? So, so uh, that stretched our um, our abilities. But we think where we're where we're at now, we're, we're we're still we've always been proud of what we produce. We wouldn't produce if we weren't proud of it. But there's a few kits from the early days that we'd like to go and revisit at some point and yeah. and, 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 and pimp our kits. Well, no, I think that's the same with a lot of companies though that they all sort of go back and they just revisit stuff that they've done in the past just to make it that little bit different or to resize stuff yeah. and make stuff look a lot better. Yeah. I mean, the, yes. I mean. The, the problem that we have is that there's just so many other kits that, that, that we're asked to make. I mean, we've got people sit, literally saying, when is this going to come out? When are you going to... Or, yeah. or <laughs> people that turn around and go, why don't you do this? Oh, well, this morning you said to me, I, I want cobbled streets. I'm actually going to prove, I'm going to do the cobbled streets for you. Yeah. And like I was saying before, the trouble with lasers is that every single thing for every single product has to be done individually by the laser i i think the cobble streets that, that you have demanded of us today uh hold on let's put let's be fair no, about no, this no, no. there's I actually a bet the <laughs> there's a bet involved right, in yeah, this we went, we, you got here uh at lunchtime we went for dinner and um and we'd eaten and and you said you were full and there were some chips <laughs> in the in the chip bowl in the middle of the table and i said all right then eat those chips uh and then I'll, I'll do it for you. And I think I've been scammed by a pool shark here because you just then munch through these chips when I was ready to <laughs> pop and I'm not small. Uh, and you just... I got to say, to be fair, I didn't, I didn't say you I didn't even want to eat the chips. But the, <laughs> but the fact yeah. is that you're going to do a, a, even do a test piece for the cobbled roads is fantastic. Yeah, we're going to give it a go. I mean, y- y- if we don't take... Yeah, yeah, all right. So because of what you do, because mm. I think you're, you're good at what you do, then we invited you over and you've come and asked me directly but whatever feedback we get from people it, it, it the, the the more feedback we get the more we can make the sort of kits that they want us to make and you said you know you've spoken to people and they say they really want some cobble streets uh they like the foreground stuff but they would really quite like to be able to have it as completely raw you know um well, i think there's the options there and plus like, like we said before it gives people with uh, uh the skill set that obviously want to learn how to either paint their own well, stuff or, yeah, or or can paint their own stuff it gives them the option to do or, it or you want a completely different color palette to the one that foreground provides you yeah. with because that was one of your other arguments which i thought was really quite good is that you know obviously we are putting the base color down assuming you're going to go in that direction when you so yeah i take it all on board and the two things that when you go the two things i've got to work on is we've got to sort out uh, well it'll be cad that sorts out this anyway. cobbled streets uh, uh <laughs> well, i'll be sorting out that myself or adam uh will be sorting out that and then we'll be sorting out some way of being able to give our products the uh the, the, the raw option uh, uh, or the, the base, you know, the base color, whatever we want to call it, uh, uncolored. And, uh, and then we'll get these co- give these cobbled streets a go. That's fantastic. So first of all, yeah, while, we're, while we're in here, yeah. so what happens in here? Okay, so you've got all the different components for the kits. They're all with their crib sheets. And then over here, uh, at the moment, there's uh, 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 Carrie and Jackie are in here. They're just sorting some things out. Carrie's actually distribution manager and uh, 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 Jackie does, uh, supervises our distribution. You know, like I was saying, uh, how we only do 20 kits at a time. They, they stamp a batch number on each one of those 20 kits so that if there, for any reason, has been anything, any slight problem, or when somebody contacts us, and that's, with them making 110,000 ca- kits in a, in, a, in a year, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a few occasions where things don't get to the person right, or they might even get to the person and then, for whatever reason, when you contact us, please have the batch number of the one that you bought. Because a lot of companies, people don't realise this, have batch numbers on their packets. So 
all you have to give is a batch number, batch and they number. can go. All we want to know is the, is is not only the I'll, I'll know the I'll know the day of the week that it was done. I'll know who did it on the day of the week that it was done, and then chances are are some, they punished? No, they're not. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Are they taken out the back? Because this used to be an old uh, prison. Camp. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> It this was a, a military this prison camp. Was, yeah. uh, on, the trading estate that we're on was yeah. built by the Anzacs in the First World War. Yeah. And then during the Second World War, uh, uh, there were Italian prisoners of war here. And then when uh, we were no longer at war against Italy, um, Italian soldiers were able to go and help work in the community. And yes, there are quite a few Italians. So you've got, got you've got a special place where you take your staff when they've been bad? N no, not really. <laughs> Because my staff mostly scare me, actually. <laughs> and like you said, they are literally all friends of the family. Yeah. I mean, you know, they've been working with us for a long, long time. There's quite a few families that work here. Um, these two behind me are actually related. Yeah. And also, uh, Luke, I've, can I just say one thing? Yeah, yeah. Gonna sound really you said quite a lot today, so we're gone. Gonna, right. <laughs> Luke, who is actually our... Is he, is he your father or your no, son? No, no, I'd like to say that Luke, I am not your father. No, <laughs> listen, this is serious. And I'm really... Okay, go on, go on, go on. Right. Luke, who is our, uh, who is Foregrounds Laser Tech. So you know we've got Trotech who come in, and do it, but Luke keeps them going day to day. Uh, he he was supposed to be working yesterday and he never turned up because he became a dad. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, Congratulations so really, to him. That's really, really cool. Don't ask me any more about his baby because I don't know yet. No, I'm not going to now. But, but, <laughs> but Luke's mum is the baby's grandmother is behind me, but you'll probably... But Congratulations. That's fantastic. <laughs> Oh, it's a girl. Oh, See oh, the grand well, as long as the grandmother knows, because yeah. really, yeah. we're really here to talk about war game stuff, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, no, but it's nice. It's always good to celebrate life. Okay, so, so once the, it's all done. So when the kits are packed, then they will then go into this sort of situation, which is, I mean, this is going to be part of a box kit. There'll either be a box kit or they'll be, or they'll be headed, but I can't find anything that's headed at the moment, so I can't show you yeah. that. Um, and that, that's got all the instructions in. That tells you what it is. There's the batch code on there. And there's all the little pre-coloured wow. bits. That's fantastic. Okay, guys, so here we are upstairs in the warehouse section. Yeah, I suppose you <laughs> want to call it that, the warehouse section. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is now this floor here. Go through there. We have, well, you've seen all the kits that are through there. And another warehousing section over there. And a warehousing section over that side. I mean, it's well. not small. I mean, we're not talking about a small place. This is quite a large no, place with no, lots and lots to, of area. You've got to bear in mind that the one downside of MDF kits is that, you know, if I have 400 uh, miniatures, then, then they take little blister packs. Mm. And when you've got sort of like different kits that can be this, this size <laughs> and bigger, yeah. then you're going to need more work. It's like, it's like yeah. at Salute, because, you know, Salute's the only real trade show that we do as ourselves. Yeah. Um, We've got a guy called Colonel Bill who does all the shows for us. He, he'll he take pre-orders for people at shows. And Colonel Bill is a really, really good um, uh, uh, place for people, UK shows, to go and get our stuff. But the thing is, is that is that our... We do salute. We have a big space. We try and make it an enjoyable occasion for people mm. because we need a big space to show what we do. So... We always try our best, and thanks very much for saying you like our tables. They are literally made by us. Most of them are actually made by Adam. Well, uh, I've got to say, I, I was really intrigued by the tables, especially because I'd never heard of you before. And I only yeah. found you because I was looking for Second World War telegraph poles. Yeah, that's a bit sad, isn't it, really? I mean, the, the wargaming is a very big hobby. Wargaming yeah. is a big hobby. I mean, we've done Salute for the third year now. Our company's only four years old. We, we have not got a massive uh, corporate advertising budget. Um, so, so... Everyone does their best. I think what's really stood us in good stead is we really try and make the best kits that we can. And a lot of people seem to like them. And our, and our, and our uh, collector's base of people that, that, that think we're doing something right is, is growing hmm. exponentially almost still. So it's great. You know, we're getting a lot of people from the States, a lot of people from Australia, South Africa, a lot of Europeans, uh, Italians, Germans especially, but also Spanish. And Polish people, so and Scandinavians. It's amazing how many people really like our kits. Uh, so it's a good job we don't use many words on our instructions because <laughs> because they're rubbish as they are. Okay, well I've got to say this has been an absolute pleasure being shown it's around. It's been good to have you here. Uh, it's uh, it's been uh, a really great day, and I've got to say, guys, if you get a chance, pop onto the website. I put the link down below for you in the description bar. Thanks for being with us, Ben. Cheers, mate. Well, I, I hope you enjoy making our kits. I love them, and I'm going to see you soon. You take care, guys.